This is Skid Row, 50 city blocks immediately east of downtown Los Angeles. I'm going to show you Skid Row from a totally different perspective and take you along as I walk through the streets of one of the largest stable populations of homeless people in the United States. Then I want to discuss the worsening homeless crisis. The number of homeless people has gone up by 75% over the past six years in Los Angeles County. All right, I'm driving down Skid Row today. Just wanted to get an up close look at this place and see what it's like. Um, a lot of tents right on the sidewalk. Um, looks like some abandoned buildings. So I went down to Skid Row by myself. I was kind of nervous because I just didn't want them to like see me with my drone and try to like swarm me and take it from me or get mad or whatever. I parked on this rooftop so I can safely take off with my drone without having to worry about someone coming after me down there. When I got there, my feelings of excitement and fear changed into sadness because there were just so many people who were so down and out. There were like, what looked like dead bodies laying on the sidewalk. The one thing that surprised me were the number of people in wheelchairs and in need of canes or some kind of assistance. Like there were so many physically disabled people. So I filmed Skid Row from three different places. One, from my drone. Two, I drove around from my car. Three, I got out of my car and walked around. And honestly, I felt the least comfortable doing that. Not only because it did feel unsafe, some of the streets, the sidewalks are lined with tents on both sides. So do you really want to walk down a street that's got a tent city on the left and the right? So I'm walking around getting a feel for the area and there's nobody else like me walking around. So it's a little, I don't know, I feel very out of place. I probably look out of place too. But the number one reason why is because I did not feel comfortable putting my camera in people's faces or making them feel like I was making a spectacle of them. I really just didn't want to make them feel bad. At any given time in the United States, there are 500,000 homeless people somewhere in the country. And in Los Angeles County, there are 60,000. Several thousand of them are in Skid Row. And I think the number one reason why Los Angeles has such a homeless problem is because of the difference and disparity between income and cost of living. In recent years, the cost of living has gone up 28%, while the renter's income has gone down by 8%. So a lot of people just don't make enough money to get by. And if there ever is some sort of reason why they have an emergency, then they end up without a house to stay in because there's just no money. There are several contributing factors to homelessness. Um, I looked up a couple stats and over half of the homeless people in Los Angeles County suffer from some form of substance abuse issue. And in a couple of experiences I have with friends, that's one of the reasons why they ended up homeless. So uh, one in particular, I knew he lived with his family, but his issue with alcohol just drove his family to the edge. And basically I think he got three last chances and finally got kicked out. His family couldn't deal with him anymore. And he ended up roaming the streets of Chicago on the subways until he finally decided to go to rehab. A lot of us have seen the show Intervention, where in many cases, people are given an opportunity to go to rehab. And if they don't accept it, the family will no longer enable them. In other words, they're going to be either homeless or they're going to go to rehab. Many times they pick going to rehab, but in some cases they pick being homeless instead, because that's how strong their addiction is. And I don't think that that's a reason to have less sympathy for them. You know, nobody wants to be addicted. But on the other hand, I don't think it's something that we should enable. It's also estimated that 25% of homeless people have a mental health concern. One time when I was in Miami, I was outside, I had ordered some Asian food and a homeless guy came up to me and he pointed at my food. 
He says, oh, you want some of that? Sure. So he reached out and he grabbed the egg rolls, but there were still a ton of vegetables on the dish. So I was like, oh, well, don't you want these vegetables? And he just shook his head no. And then I said, well, you should, they're healthy. And then he said, <laughs> and I was like, okay, oh, wow. So when we're talking about mental illness, we really mean people who are severely mentally ill sometimes to the point where they can't even speak. Like how could that guy help himself? He can't even talk. It was just really an eye-opening look into some of the mental health issues that are out there that people just not even able to take advantage of resources, even if they wanted to. And from talking to people about homeless concerns, I think you'll find that each person's story is different. There are a couple key contributing factors. Um, 20 to 40% of homeless youth are LGBT. So a lot of them get kicked out by their families because their families don't support it, religion or whatever. Half of all foster kids end up homeless by the age of 18. So once they're done with the foster program, half of them end up on the streets. That's really sad. They basically never got a chance. People end up homeless because they're running from domestic violence. So kids or uh, wives or husbands maybe leave the home because they're afraid of being beaten up by their spouse. I mean, that's, that's really sad. People who served time in jail may oftentimes find it very hard to get hired anytime they get a background check. Uh, another type of homeless person may be someone who is running from the police. So they don't want to check into a homeless shelter. If they do, they might be found out. So they stay on the streets hiding from the cops. Lack of resources, lack of housing can all contribute to the problem too. In Los Angeles in particular, obviously the cost of living is extremely high. And then again, if you're homeless, the weather here is probably the most easy on someone who wants to live outside. So maybe that has something to do with it. You think people are homeless because there's no room in the homeless shelters? Well, a lot of times there is. Uh, I had a friend in New York City who fell on hard times and ended up going to a homeless shelter for a while. And he told me that they have a curfew. You have to be in by 11 p.m. and you have to stay in until 7 a.m. And he said there was room, but a lot of people just don't want to have to deal with the curfew, so they pick life on the streets instead. Then he said, you know, some of them didn't feel safe in the homeless shelter, which he said there were times when he didn't feel safe. He said there was someone who started a fire on his fire escape. He goes, imagine the irony, a fire on my fire escape. But then again, are they safer on the streets? You know, I had a friend who was homeless in the streets of Chicago and ended up with his teeth knocked out because a group of people just beat him up. So it's like, are you really any safer on the street? For my friend who lived in the homeless shelter in New York, you know, I asked him, do people do drugs in there? And he said, oh yeah. And then I thought to myself, you know what? That makes sense. I mean, they can't even keep drugs out of prison, let alone, you know, people in a homeless shelter who are free to leave during the day and then come back every night. I mean, that's just too hard to control. So in many cases, people are homeless because they're not willing or able to take advantage of the resources that are out there. The homeless people are affecting those of us who aren't homeless. I have a friend in San Francisco whose car was broken into three times. She had one of her house keys in her car. So the person who broke into her car was trying to break into her apartment while she was in it. So a lot of people have really grown frustrated with the homeless problem as it affects them too. I have the utmost sympathy for people who are homeless, whether they're homeless because of domestic violence or they're homeless because of a substance abuse problem. When I was looking at my drone footage from Skid Row, I came across the Hotel Cecil, which has a very storied, sketchy past. There was a girl who came to stay at the Hotel Cecil in downtown Los Angeles because she thought it was a great price and a great location. Well, I don't know if you call Skid Row a great location. And she went missing. They couldn't see any footage of her leaving the hotel. They only saw footage of her in the elevator. They looked all over for her. They couldn't find her. Eventually, people in the hotel said that the water pressure was low and that their water had a funny taste. The maintenance man went to check the water tanks and they found the missing girl dead in the water tank. There is a Netflix documentary on it. It's totally crazy. I'm including a link to a really great article with seven ways to help LA's homeless residents in the description. So check it out. And I'm not an expert on all things homeless. I just have my own perspective. So if you guys have something to share, I'd love to hear it in the comments. Thank you for watching.